Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Welcome to this Secrets of Success episode, where we share expert solutions that serve your personal and professional life. I'm your host, Christine Love, and today our special guest is Michael Temez, who is with MichaelTemez.com. Welcome to the show, Michael. Let's begin. What is your intention for your business and what do you do? The intention for, for my business and what I do is to make a significant impact on the obesity epidemic that we have in the United States and in other parts of the world. I understand what your business is, but what was your intention in starting it? Like, what does that look like? What it looks like is me reaching out to as many people as possible with my personal weight loss transformation story in that, you know, losing 105 pounds and reversing obesity-related health problems because of you know, be- being obese. So having that to, having that, you know, behind me, having that as my, um, my way to reach out to people, I can really create a, a rapport with people and so people can have that relatedness with me. So that way they can see that I'm someone that understands what what they struggle with when it comes to weight loss or when it comes to having food addictions or anything having to do with, you know, being overweight. So you actually go beyond being able to empathize with someone because you've been there. So you have a closer relationship to what they're going through and you can be more realistic in your conversations with people who are dealing with obesity issues. That's correct. Because a lot of the, a lot of the health gurus and a lot of the diets and approaches to wellness a lot of the people that are behind them not necessarily have been through a term- losing a tremendous amount of weight and and even further this you know dealing with the stuff that comes up being you know being overweight the the, emo- the emotional trauma and the mental stuff that you have to overcome and transform that's attached to being physically overweight and that's those are the things that I that I understand because of the experience so I can relate in that aspect as well Yes, a lot of people don't relate to the emotional trauma, um, and we're going to talk more about that. But before we get there, can you tell me uh, exactly who do you help? Is is it men? Is it women? Is it children? Is it across the board? Is there a particular area that you focus on? It is pretty much across the board. However, I like to... I like to coach people who are open to the message that I'm, that I'm, that I'm uh, delivering. Because a lot of people think that they're ready because this is not what I do. My health coaching is not a, an overnight solution type of thing. It's not a lose weight fast, drop pounds and inches type of uh, program. It's, it's designed to have a person look at every area of their life and establish a functional relationship with themselves from the inside out. So and that's why I explain to my clients, it's a, it's a commitment to their health that I'm asking them to make. So anyone that's willing to make a commitment to their health, a commitment to losing weight, a commitment to living a more healthier, sustainable life, then that's who I want to work with. Because without that, without that openness and willingness, it, it, it puts, that creates walls and blockages to, to moving forward and, and achieving these goals and results. So, you know, anyone who's in that, in that, in that circumstance is definitely going to be a good client. Okay, so it sounds like you could actually help anyone who's uh, dealing with obesity issues as long as they're committed to the process instead of looking for some quick fix or not even committed to the necessarily any particular process but committed to their health and going through the process. Yeah, yeah, basically what I like to explain to people that are interested in, in this approach is you didn't become overweight overnight. I know I didn't. It's not, you're not going to lose that weight overnight either. That's why I'm saying it's a process. It's a process of commit, of making that commitment, going through the steps, the necessary steps. And that's where, that's where I come in. And that's where my book comes in. And everything I do is to guide people, hold their hand through the process. So that way they see that they're, they're taking the correct steps necessary to make it to their end goal. And this evolution, how did you get to that point? Because we know it was a gargantuan effort to go from where you were at to losing 100 pounds. But before you started or before you actually made that personal commitment to yourself, was that personal commitment made 
at the beginning or did you just start doing a few things and then realize that it was working and that you're just committed to your health? Because most people going through or dealing with obesity issues, they tried this, that, and the other thing dozens and dozens and dozens of times. So what got you to the point where you made this commitment? What was that evolutional process? It got to the point where I had sleep apnea so bad that I was falling asleep during the day and I was falling asleep driving, driving even. I actually got into a car accident because of it. So that, that in and of itself was an aha moment for me to wake up and do something about my health. So I decided to take my health in my hands and that's when I, that's when I made the commitment. And I, and I didn't want to do the fad diets or the, the, the pills that were popular back in the, in the, in the late nineties and early two thousands. I didn't want to do any of the, these overrated approaches. I wanted it to be a complete and, and permanent lifestyle transformation. And I knew that was going to take some work, but I didn't know exactly what type of work that was going to take until I actually dove right in and started learning what I could and started researching and I'm uncovering these things and learning about processed foods and how ingredients are formulated. The sleep apnea and actually getting into an accident because of it, that I can see that's like clear emotional trauma. What would you say are some of the across the board pains of people who are dealing with obesity where they might not have had that much of an extreme event happen to them, but they're dealing with issues every day that just kind of compound and perhaps contribute to the obesity. What would you, you were talking about emotional traumas previously. What, what does that look like? That actually, the emotional traumas are actually, from my experience personally and from my experience coaching my clients, those emotional traumas are actually more intimately connected to the physical issues than people realize. When people start really digging deep and, and uncovering what is behind their physical health struggles, then they realize it's connected to stuff that they're holding onto from the past. And that could be anything from a failed relationship, a job that they are absolutely miserable at. It could be that they're not happy with their financial situation. It could be that they're not, they're not, they're not happy with their educational achievements. All these areas are intimately connected. And if they're not all, if a person is not happy in all these areas, you know, that can affect your physical. I invite people, I invite my clients and the readers of my book to start questioning what is going on underneath their physical symptoms. Because, because a lot of the approaches today are, are designed and geared towards treating your physical symptoms, such as when you're overweight, let's have you lose weight. But, and, and that works and that's fine. That approach is fine. It'll, you can lose weight on a lot of diets out there. However, they don't, these diets don't ask you the questions that are necessary. These questions are those open-ended questions that keep people thinking about what they're truly dealing with underneath. Um, say a person They've been dealing with this issue for a while. They understand that the personal traumas that they're dealing with, and they're, they're pretty clear on that, or they believe they're clear on that. What would you say is a common obstacle that prevents them from moving forward? Themselves. That is definitely the biggest obstacle. I, I see it with my clients. I saw it with myself. Myself, everyone's own self is their biggest obstacle. Because, and the reason is, is because we tend to self-sabotage and make things so much more complicated than they actually are. We stand in our own way. Most effective thing that people could possibly do is step out of their own way so they can see possibilities that open up when they do that. And the possibilities are endless when they, when they are able to step back away from their own progress. Now, when you say get out of their own way, is that... Is that self-sabotage? Is it about misconceptions about what it actually takes? Is it just a, is it about fears of moving forward? What would you say getting out of their own way? What something that they would need to look at in order to break through, in order to take those first steps? The first thing that I would highly recommend in that, in that situation would be to examine the thought patterns that we have going on examine the conversations that we have not only with ourselves but with other people about ourselves how do we feel do we genuinely love ourselves do we respect and honor the path that we've taken until now in this point in our lives because a lot of the time we tend to look at what is horrible in our life why we why we are inadequate ugly stupid fat 
you know, not good enough. I mean, we look at all those things all the time first. And when we start looking at what actually works and how amazing we are and how beautiful we are first, then we can, from that, create more of what, how, you know, more of the amazingness, more of the beauty, more of the awesomeness that we want in life. It's kind of like the whole, the whole law of attraction. You focus more on what you do want by, you know, looking at yourself and saying, I love myself for creating this. I, I'm, I'm amazing for where I'm at right now. I'm beautiful as I am. And working off of that, then we can move forward into more of that. And it's very powerful when we do that because then that enables us to get out of our own way. You know, when you acknowledge things first, you get more of what you really want. That was a really big thought um, because I can't imagine – I can't imagine someone being 100 pounds overweight, having all the societal images around them condemning them pretty much, and then getting to the point where you've been in this situation for such a period of time that there's self-shaming too. How mm-hmm. can someone, is it through coaching or how can someone really honestly look in the mirror and say, I love you as you are, you're perfect? How do they because we just basically realizing our connectedness to to everything and everyone I mean and I understand I've, I've been there and I get it trust me I get how difficult it can be when you're in that situation but I invite people to first of all the reason that we have this conditioning is because of programming and this programming comes from TV it comes from media it comes from uh, all these sources that bombard us with these messages of inadequacy and these these images of, of people who we are supposed to look like. You're supposed to look like these supermodels or these these people with six packs and these people that are that are in amazing shape. And you know we're we're constantly bombarded with these images and and uh, articles and news news programs about this and about that. Getting rid of all that stuff can really really help with self love and the image the self image that we have. Because if you really think about it, when we take away all of that stuff, then all we're left with is ourself. And then we're left to deal with ourself. And that's, that's when a coach can come and help. My goal with coaching is to not have someone be, you know, coming to me for coaching for the rest of their life. It's to get a person to the point where they can take back their health in their own hand. They can, they can lead their own way through the tools that I provide them from the experience that I've had. Take those tools and create the life that they want in every area of their life. So when they're standing in that mirror thinking, how could I actually love a body that looks like that? Starting with that conversation, that's the conversation that needs to be transformed first and foremost. Because with a, with a negative and condescending conversation like that, how can you create anything positive? It's a, it's a shift in context from, you know, looking at the negative to looking at the positive. So what you don't look like you want? So what you don't have the body that you want? What what amazing thing do you offer to not only the world, but to other people around you, to yourself, to your family members, to your community? What, what do you have there that you can appreciate? And then when we work from that, then we can look in the mirror and say, wow, because of that thing I have to offer, I may have changed or impacted someone's life. And because of that, I am amazing for it, regardless of what the mirror is telling me, because the mirror is a liar and I don't believe it. You know, those are, that's, that's what I, that's how I like to empower my clients. That's how I like to empower them to think and go about the the approach to losing weight and to transforming their health. So it really sounds like when you're looking in the mirror, instead of the only thing you're seeing is just excess weight, and instead of judging that, saying this is part of who I am and it served this part part of me, but it's not all that I am. Please. Who I really am is I've got this value and this value and this value, exactly. and then you start seeing the whole picture of you instead of just one picture. Exactly. Looking beyond the physical body and seeing your essence, because it is the essence where true beauty lies. You could be a knockout. You could have an amazing body. But if you're horrible and dirty on the inside, that amazing body means nothing. When you're, cl- when you're, when you have something to offer and you see that and you acknowledge it, that's, that's where the power lies and that's where transformation begins. And then you can get the body you want from loving, respecting and honoring your essence. 
So your solution, you detail it in your book, you go through your personal journey. Is there is it a step by step process? Is it work on your own terms? What does your solution look like? It looks different for everyone because I'll tell you this, we're seven billion strong on the planet. So that means that there's seven billion different approaches to nutrition, to healthy eating, to weight loss. Not everybody's program is the same. Not everyone's program is even remotely close because everyone has different wants, different needs, different digestive systems, different organs, different ancestral backgrounds, different racial backgrounds. So it's all going to be, everyone's program is going to be different. Everyone's first step is going to be different because one person to the next could want totally different, uh, could have totally different goals. Although they might have similar wants and needs. And then on the other hand, they might have totally similar goals, but completely opposite, you know, wants and needs. Kind of assessing where someone is at. I, I send, I have a, uh, a very in, in depth questionnaire that I, that I have my clients complete to fully understand every area of their life. And it, it covers, just like I said earlier, it covers everything from relationships to social life to, to career to financial to, to physical activity to home cooking. And I kind of get a good understanding of where people are at and then work with that and create steps for them based on what their goals are, what the answers to the, the form that they fill out and what their goal, you know, what their goals are, what they want to achieve and what their commitment is and, and kind of put it all together and create with them instead of for them. That's the whole purpose of me coaching them is to not just hold their hand on the journey, but to be there with them on the team with them. Basically, you're saying this is an individualized process that's, and when they work with you, they get a, a personalized experience based on who they are, what they really want, and what their world looks like. That's correct, because there is no one diet that works for everyone. And that's one of my main things right there is so people understand that it's basically empowering people to create their own diet that works for their body, their mind, their 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 emotions and their spirit exclusively for them, not their brother, not their sister, not their neighbor, for them, for them exclusively. Okay. Now, one thing that we believe as part of our particular process is that change happens through experience. So say someone either gets your book and they go through that process or they hear this interview, what, what would you say is one foundational principle that someone can practice where that particular practice helps them evolve no matter what they do. The main thing that I would, you know, that I would say would be to start listening to your body because in doing so, when you listen to your body, your body will tell you exactly how you need to eat the food, the type of foods you need to eat, the amount of foods you need to eat, how to eat them, when to eat them. And the steps to take to start tuning into what our body is telling us is to really start listening to it's communication. The communication that our body gives us is, it varies. And sometimes it's in the form of symptoms. Sometimes it's in the form of gut feelings. Sometimes it's in the form of intuition. These are all things that we kind of, we live busy lives. So we kind of tend to sweep under the rug. So listening to your body, that would be really the main thing, but it's mm -hmm. really about being present and paying attention to what's really going on instead of feeding and not feeling anything. Exactly. And when people are in this state of presence, then they are actually more, they're more able and willing to look in the mirror and accept themselves as they see themselves when people are present. Because all this unpresence that we have going on in our fast-paced society mm -hmm. takes us away from our essence. Well, it sounds like if someone is willing to be in that state of presence, then it kind of eliminates the obstacles that a lot of people give themselves, like price, time commitment, what other people are thinking about what they look like or that they fail so many times they can't do it this time. That just that practice of presence, it really sounds like it gets people out of a failure loop into actually moving forward. Is that your experience? Yeah, it is. And and the more that people the more that people become present, which, and it's great that you said a practice because it really is a practice. And that's the thing that people really need to understand that it's not, it's not a permanent, you know, it, you know, it's not, I mean, it's not, I'm sorry. It's not, it's not a perfect, it's a practice. 
you're going to, you know, we're human. We error. It's, it's normal to fall off and have a, a you know, a, a cheat day or a day that it's just, it just ain't happening, you know, and, and to accept that instead of beat yourself up and feel guilty about it is normal. And it makes, it makes you human and it makes you stronger to get back up the next day, dust yourself off, keep moving forward to that goal. And that's exactly where that presence comes in is saying, okay, well, this is a practice I'm learning along the way and life is my teacher and I'm going to roll with that. And that's, that's where I'd like to get people in that space so they can create from that, from that presence. Okay. And I've heard you use the word invite. You invite people to consider this. So it sounds like you're really an advocate for choice. What is a person's life experience going to be like in their health and relationships if they choose to do nothing versus what it could possibly be like if they start walking through the process? It's going to be vastly different. And one of the biggest powers that we have, that we possess, is the power of choice, power to choose, because it can make or break something. It can create or destroy. So when you think of it in that context, are you creating or are you destroying? Do you choose something that's positive and good for your health? Or are you going to choose something that's negative and bad? You know, do you want to eat fast food or do you want to prepare some food yourself, eat some uh, sandwiches, salads, whatever? And and I'm glad you brought that point up because that's one of the very important aspects of what I do is to give people that power back because people think that they're powerless and don't have a choice, but we really do. And that is very, very important for people to get. And that's one of the things that I like to like people uh, make people aware that I am not an absolute person. My book is not about absolutes. It's not about saying you should do this. You need to do that. You got to do this. That's not what I'm about. And there's a lot you can, there's a million and one different diet books and approaches out there that are, that are saying you need and you should, and you need to do this. And I'm not about that. I'm about presenting people information, educating them so that they can make an informed decision based on what resonates with them and what works for their body exclusively. And then go with that, keep moving off of that. And that's tied into the whole listen to your body, because in order to create that for yourself, you need to know what your body is communicating to you. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. And I love that creation, destruction. I love that because it's such a clarity. So if someone is ready to walk away from the destructive path and start taking those steps towards the path of creation, where can they find out more about you and how you can help them? Is starting with your book so they know the overall, or would it be actually contacting you so they can go through that questionnaire you were referring to? How can they find out more about you, and what would their first steps be? Great question, and that is exactly what I wanted to explain. Touching on what we just talked about is the power of choice. Reading my book gives a very solid understanding of what health coaching is about, what what specifically my style of health coaching is. And it gives people a good solid understanding of everything that I, that I, that I share from my experience and the tools that I provide. So that way people can get a really good understanding of what, what I'm all about and what my message is and what my health coaching program is. So they can decide from there if they want to take it to another level and work with me one on one or in groups or whatever it may be. So that's the best way to start is with my book because you can really get, really get a good solid understanding and, and decide from there. Perfect. And I'll make sure that our readers and listeners have access to your book. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.